All right, welcome. Today is April 12th, uh, 2024, and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration is hearing a proposal to use minimal residual disease as a primary endpoint of studies for accelerated approval to give drugs in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma an accelerated approval based on MRD negativity at, say, 9 or 12 months, and subsequently follow them for PFS and OS. And they've been discussing this at great length. It appears from the discussants and the FDA's briefing document that everybody is on board. Well, not everybody. So here are some reasons why MRD testing, accelerated approval, would be a disastrous policy decision. I'm going to give you my case, and I'm going to present an abbreviated version of these remarks at the FDA hearing within the hour. All right, use of MRD testing in endpoint multiple myeloma clinical trials. I think the FDA has lost sight of the entire goal of this operation. The goal of FDA drug approval is to grant marketing authorization to patients with newly diagnosed myeloma that results in a longer life or a better life, living longer or living better. Using MRD testing as an endpoint for accelerated approval would be an error for five important reasons. Okay, let's go through the reasons, and at least the first two are interlinked. Number one, in order to create accelerated approval endpoints, you have to evoke an unmet medical need. There is no unmet medical need for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. It does not qualify for unmet medical need by any reasonable definition. Number one, the four-year overall survival in the most recent study, Perseus, is 90% OS for Dara VRD and 88 for VRD. The median survival was eight to 10 years prior to this study. For a patient enrolling tomorrow in a clinical trial where MRD as an endpoint will be applicable, the median survival for such a patient may be 15 years. How can we say it's an unmet medical need when the median overall survival is 15 years for somebody who's already in their 60s or 70s when they present with the condition? Number two, in order to evoke unmet medical need, you have to have no or limited treatment options. There are many treatment options in newly diagnosed myeloma. There are 17 regimens listed in the NCCN guidelines comprised of 14 different drugs. There are 20 drugs FDA approved in myeloma in any line. We have an abundance of treatment options and we have incredibly good 10-year survival. And thus, it is not an unmet medical need. If we were to say newly diagnosed myeloma was an unmet medical need, then even type 2 diabetes with cardiovascular risk factors would be an unmet medical need. There are many, many conditions across medicine where a 60 or 70-year-old presents and you have a 90% four-year overall survival. Everything will be an unmet medical need and we'll have a bonanza of unproven drugs on the U.S. market. Number two, and I think this is the most important point. MRD as the basis for accelerated approval would mean unsafe drugs come to the U.S. market. MRD testing will be assessed sooner than progression-free survival, maybe even one to three years prior to PFS. Novel drugs might be eligible for accelerated approval as soon as 12 or 15 months after a trial begins. These fast approvals mean that we will have very active drugs, i.e. they can kill plasma cells, but we will not know much about the long-term and serious safety risks of these products. They're just going to be approving these drugs too fast. For instance, CAR-T can be inducing Parkinsonism, and that was only first noted in 2021. The first CAR-T was given around 2014. MRD as accelerated approval would rush these agents to the market, and then a huge population of people with a long overall survival may be getting side effects you never wanted them to have. Teclistimab. In the teclistimab study, 14% of people experienced grade 3-4 infections 18 to 24 months after the initial dose. We did not know this early on. It took time to learn that the bispecific antibodies have, have this infection safety risk. This is very important for a condition where survival may be 15 years for patients enrolling in trials today and tomorrow. You do not want these patients to suffer Parkinsonism, neurologic toxicity, or long-term infection risk. And you won't know that when you're approving the products. Number three, progression-free survival, which is already the basis of FDA approval in the newly diagnosed setting, is already quite permissive. PFS itself does not have a strong trial-level correlation with living longer. It doesn't predict living longer. MRD does not predict overall survival at a trial level, and it is another surrogate. And MRD has a weak pr prediction of PFS. In an analysis by uh, Tommy Etial and myself, PFS has a poor correlation with overall survival. The R squared between OS and PFS is 0.39, meaning most of the variability in survival is not captured by the PFS endpoint. The FDA presented these results today from their own trial level analyses, and they show that across the board, MRD does not predict overall survival at a trial level state. There is only a moderate to strong association in newly diagnosed transplant ineligible patients, but that's not true in the other categories, okay? And even then there's only seven data points. It's extremely uncertain estimate. Surrogacy must only be assessed at the trial level and not the individual level. Individual level surrogacy, that's not surrogacy, that's prognostic factors. 
The question is not the individual level question. Do people who achieve MRD negativity do better than those who don't achieve it? The answer is, of course they do. They do better. The question for the FDA is, do regimens that increase the rate of MRD negativity later improve overall survival? That's the trial level question. And here, trial level cor correlations across the board are poor. And in the one case where it's slightly favorable, the other two analyses suggest it probably doesn't work so well, and there's only seven data points. Most of the variability in overall survival is not captured by MRD testing. You will allow many uncertain products on the market. MRD fails as a surrogate by the FDA's own metrics. Number five, multiple myeloma trials have poor use of appropriate post-progression treatment. Across the board, in second and third, in, in clinical trials in myeloma, when global trials are run, the global settings are not administering second and third line options in accordance with the US standard. Post-progression treatment in global registration studies is beneath the standard. For instance, in Maya, Dara, v, Dara RD versus RD, 51% of patients in the control arm of Maya died without ever getting daratumumab as in salvage regimen. This is absolutely not in accordance with the US standard. This problem plagues the triplet and doublet studies. It plagues the quadruplet studies. The lack and poor quality of post-protocol therapy is a huge problem in myeloma trials. We examine this in this paper. We look across the board, across many, many. It's either not reported or very low rates of appropriate post-protocol therapy. What does this mean? This means that even if the FDA watches trials to exclude a deterioration or worse overall survival, that is only in the context of substandard post-protocol therapy. A drug could come to the US market that would result in worse overall survival in the US market, but in global trials with poor post-protocol care, that effect will be masked or hidden because people aren't getting subsequent options that would extend their life. So the FDA must ensure that both control arms are appropriate and post-progression therapies up to the US standard. They failed to do this in most of the registration studies. Safety, this is my big point. The big problem with MRD testing as, a base, as an accelerated approval endpoint is you're gonna take people with a great overall survival, a decade or more, and you will give them drugs very fast that have inadequate safety profiles. A little Parkinsonism or neurological damage or pain or neuropathy will be catastrophic when you live with it for 15 years. This population needs to be shielded from risk precisely because the outcomes are so good. PFS buys you two to three more years to collect safety information. It's already permissive. It already has a poor correlation with OS. We don't need to change the status quo. We can stick to what we have. You will be rushing active but toxic drugs to the frontline setting in a population with lots of other options and long survival if this decision were to be made. Those are my thoughts. All right, and some additional thoughts that I didn't share is that this looks like a done deal. I looked at the FDA's briefing document and it looks like they're on board. This has been a disaster. They are not really taking the input of people who disagree with them. They released these documents about a day and a half ago. That's barely enough time to get through a 200 page document. I wanna look through how they actually did their correlations. I suspect there's some issues around how do you handle missing data and how do you handle people who progress before MRD can be assessed. I'm not sure I agree with their analyses, but I don't have time to review it in depth because they just dropped that. And they literally have nobody there who is a strong defender of objective and good standards in drug approval. And I think that's a problem, one of the big biases of this meeting. It looks like the decision is already cast, so I doubt my comment's gonna make much of an effect, but I'm still gonna make it within the hour. All right, any questions from you all?